Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be showing you how to use the insert tool to patch with feathering. So, I've got this shot, and we've got to remove this boom mic over here between these two women's shoulders. The challenge with this shot is that it's a multi-layer solve, and the foreground shoulder in front of the microphone we're trying to remove has lens blur on it, or focus blur. But using the insert tool inside of Mocha Pro makes this a super easy task. And you can simply render the results right out of Mocha without using compositing tools such as Nuke or After Effects. The first thing we're going to need to do is get rid of this blanking. So we go to the Clip tab and we drag these yellow boxes down. This masks out any blanking and we can simply select the Track tab once we are done by clicking right here. Now, back in the Track tab, what we can do is we can select our X-Spline and we can draw a shape around the object that we want to remove. The reason we're doing this is actually so that Mocha doesn't look here while we're tracking the rest of the objects in this scene. As you can see, this shape is completely contained inside of my X-Spline, although I want to make it a little bit smaller so that it doesn't interfere with too much of my tracking of the woman's shoulder in the background. Now I'm going to name my layer because layer order is really important in any remove or insert. This tells Mocha where to look, but we're going to talk about that more later. What we're going to do right now is select our X spline and then draw a shape around this foreground shoulder. The next thing we're going to do is name that, and then we're going to draw a shape around this background shoulder. Name it again, background shoulder. We're going to make a new shape for this lady's blonde hair because we want to hold that out from our wall track, and we're going to make sure that this is exactly how we want it. And we're going to make a shape for our wall track just like this. And we're going to label both of these. Now, from here, all we have to do is make sure these are all in the proper order. If the user stacks foreground layers at the top of the layer pile and background layers underneath those layers, Mocha will always hold them out from the foreground to the background to get proper tracks. Next, we simply turn on the Surface tool and align our surface to our objects more or less so that we can tell what the track will do. And then we hit Track Forward. Now, obviously, I've sped up this tracking so that you don't have to sit through it. From here, all I have to do is correct my shapes using Auto Key, which is set on by default, and keys will automatically be made where I make corrections, and they'll move along with the track. We have tons of tutorials on Roto and How To Roto, so I'm going to speed through this because it's not the most relevant part of the technique. Basically, Mocha will cut your roto time in half by reducing your keyframes to about a third of what you normally use because it moves the shapes along with the track and then you just correct where it's off. Please see our video page for more. Techniques you do need to know though are the auto key and uber key. So we're just going to switch to the uber key right here and then we're going to select our selection tool and choose select inner points just like this in this drop down menu. Now when we move points, They'll be ripple edited throughout the shot. And in this case, we're going to feather the shoulder edge just like this by clicking and dragging these points inward. You can see that there's a gap created here, and that's going to be our edge feather. Make a habit of learning to switch auto key on as soon as you're done with uber key. I'm going to use the uber key to correct my background as well. And then we're going to use the uber key to correct this background woman's shoulder in the same exact technique. But you don't have to simply use Uber key for manual adjustments. You can also use Edge Properties and the Uber key to increase feathering universally around an entire shape, just like this, by clicking the Add button. Now I have a universal edge feathering of two pixels all the way around this woman's shoulder. And that will really help when I'm patching this in the Insert tool. Regardless, what I actually want to do is add more feathering to the inside edge of her jacket. So we're going to go select inner points and we're going to click and drag these all further towards the microphone we're trying to remove because we don't want our patch to be noticeable. We want it to blend really nicely in with the rest of her jacket. So we're going to keep that two pixel edge feathering on the outside edge and then we're going to manually adjust the edge feathering throughout the inside of her jacket towards her neck. And we want to make sure our selection tool is selecting the proper points we're trying to grab. You can select both inner or edge. So we're going to finish the roto up on the shoulder. Then we're going to make any final adjustments on the background and final adjustments on the shoulder in the foreground. 
Next, we need to do something very important. We need to move the surface tool to the edges of the frame using a line surface, which is this button right here. If I turn my surface tool on, you can see that this has taken the blue square we call the surface tool and pushed it to all four corners of the frame. Now that we've done that to the foreground shoulder, we can click on the Remove tab and we're actually going to cheat and have Mocha freeze frame this on the first frame by hitting Create Clean Plate. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the background, which is select the background shoulder, hit Align Surface, and select Clean Plate. And then we're going to do the same thing for the background layer, which is align the surface and select Create Clean Plate. What this does is this saves three frames that we can paint patches on right inside of our results folder. Next, we simply jump over to the Insert tab, and then we're going to launch Photoshop to paint our patches. Inside of Photoshop, we're going to go to File, Open, and then we're going to navigate to our Results folder, and inside of our Results folder, we're going to select our clean plates that we have previously saved out of Mocha, and hit Open. Once all three plates are open, we can start to paint them in Photoshop using the Clone tool. This is not a Photoshop tutorial. I assume that you know how to use the Clone tool inside of Photoshop. Simply select the Clone tool, select Alt to choose a clone location, and then click and drag to paint. This works best with a Wacom tablet, but you can also paint with a mouse. Make sure that when you paint your plates that you are really over painting the areas that you're going to use as patches because remember you're going to feather over the top of one another and you have to account for all this blanking. So you've got to create data where there is no data in the original footage. We're going to do the same thing to this woman's background shoulder here by selecting the clone tool and just bringing her jacket down and off screen and doing the same thing for her shoulder. Notice that the microphone is being completely painted out with the clone tool. Notice also that we're going way outside of the edges when we get towards the edge of her jacket or shoulder. The reason for that is we want to account for any wiggle room. Once we're done with that, we simply go over to the foreground lady's shoulder and we do the same exact technique, clone and paint. So alt and paint and paint and paint. And notice again that we're super over scanning the edge. Especially in the foreground, we want to make sure we overscan a lot because there's a lot of movement in her foreground shoulder. So you want to make sure your patch covers the entire area that needs to be covered. While this seems like overkill, trust me, when you load it all back together, it will blend together beautifully. Now let's take a look at what we've done. We should have three patches of large overscan area for the background wall, the background shoulder, and the woman's foreground shoulder. Back in Mocha, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our insert clip and choose import. We're going to find our results folder and we're going to open up our files that we just saved. So we're going to select our background plate here and hit open and import. Now that background plate will be applied to the surface tool. Notice how it's the full frame. From here we go to the comp tab inside of our insert tool and in the comp tab we use layer mats. That will actually make our layer mat be held to the entire wall. Now I actually don't want to have the entire wall be patched. I only want behind her shoulder. So let's go ahead and adjust that really, really simply by feathering it a bit and shrinking the shape. Next we're going to do the same exact technique to the background shoulder by going to insert clip, import, choose. We're going to pick our shoulder plate that we made just like this. Hit open and hit import. Now that that's imported, you can see that it's moving along with the entire surface tool. We're going to use layer mats and see how that's looking. It's looking pretty nice, actually. Looks like it blends really well with the shot. All right, time for step two. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually apply this to the front shoulder as well. So again, we're going to go to the Insert Clip tab, right? And we're going to import our second clip just like this by hitting Open. Once our clip is imported, we simply use the layer mats again to apply this to the front area. Now let's see how that looks. Looks like it's actually moving really nicely along with the shot. From here, we simply hit render and we allow Mocha to do the work for us. And Mocha will move our patches along with the shapes that we have created and the roto that we have created along with the tracks that we have created. Now I'm simply going to save my file by going to File, Save Project, and now we're going to go to File, 
export rendered clip and we're going to save this as a QuickTime. You can save it as an image sequence if you like, but I actually prefer to save them as QuickTimes. Once we decide on our name, we hit OK, and then we can decide on our codec by scrolling down to ProRes, for example, hitting OK, and exporting our clip just like this. And we end up with a really nice before and after. So here is our before, and here is our cleanup with our shoulder all fuzzy in the foreground without having to do a ton of paintwork, simply Photoshop patches and mocha. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin, and I'll be happy to help. Be sure to go to our website at www.imaginarysystems.com.